Hey hackers, what's going on? Uh, Blue Cosmo from Cosmodium Cybersecurity here. Uh, today I wanted to show you guys what I use as um, my solution for a malware analysis lab. Um, as you guys know, I run Linux as a main computer. So I wanted to kind of give you guys what I kind of use. Um, but yeah, other than that, I guess we can kind of just hop into it. There's not too much going on. Um, I know a lot of people would prefer uh, systems like VirtualBox, but I am, um, not using VirtualBox, I'm using Qmu, uh, KVM. It's a, an amazing, amazing solution. I've heard rumors about um, the the VirtualBox like Windows um, virtual machine is getting kind of weird. So I I wanted to offer this as an alternative and kind of give you guys an idea of what I do. But just just to give you guys an idea of what operating system I'm using, I'm using Linux Mint. Uh, this does work on both Arch and Debian based operating systems. Um, so if you guys uh, are using either of those, then this should be uh, very keen to you. Cool. So I'll go ahead and get started. So first of all, um, I am on uh, Kimu. If you guys don't know how to install it, I just kind of pulled this up real quick. Um, obviously, if you guys have been watching the channel somewhat consistently, you guys know about the malware DNA repository. This is where we store all of the uh, you know assets for malware analysis and development videos. So right here is a Kimu Malware Lab uh, document, and this covers everything, all the resources that I covered from this video. Um, I may update it after this video in case I have, I've forgotten anything, but um, everything should be here by the time uh, you watch this video. So if you need to install Kimu for whatever reason, there's the Debian and Arch tutorials. If you're on Debian, you can just copy and paste um, these commands. And if you're on Arch, you can copy and paste these commands. Obviously, I do recommend you always read through it. Make sure you're not copying and pasting anything malicious or that doesn't apply to you. Uh, so make sure to briefly read through them and uh, get a good gauge of what you may need or may not need. Um, cool. The other things you're going to need are the ISOs, so your actual images for the operating systems. Um, I left the link to Windows 10 and Ubuntu 20.04. Um, if you're in, like, some, some countries won't let you uh, be able to install this Windows 10 image. If that's the case, then uh, there's there's an alternative development Windows ISO that I would uh, look up for. I think it's in the original Flare VM uh, tutorial. I'll probably link that in there. Um, but yeah, just so you guys have a uh, an idea of what ISO is to download. Um, cool. So we'll go ahead and start with Flare, and uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and start with Flare. So um, with Kimu, you have some different networks here and stuff. Um, but the one I'm gonna be working with is this one. This one is actually on my home server. So I'm gonna build these virtual machines on my home server, but you guys can just use the default uh, Kimu KVM network to build your virtual machines out on. So you're gonna right click on whatever network you're on. So for you guys, you would right click over here. Um, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit new. Um, and it's going to say uh, create new virtual machine. You can't hit that button in the top to create the virtual machine as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be selecting Planet Cosmo, but you probably want to select the normal uh, Kimu KVM. Cool. And we'll move forward. So now it's going to ask you for the ISOs. Um, by default, it's going to open up this directory var lib libvirt images. I would suggest keeping your ISOs in there because it's just going to be kind of convenient because both your ISOs and um, the virtual machine files are going to be in that directory. So you guys can uh, go ahead and make your lives easier and just uh, keep your ISOs in there. Otherwise, you can add the directory and uh, search up for it. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and select Windows. Cool. And it's going to ask for the operating system. Uh, we'll go ahead and put Windows uh, 10. There you go. And move forward. Cool. So it's going to ask for uh, RAM and CPU. I think eight gigabytes is, or sorry, four gigabytes of RAM is fine, and two CPUs is fine. Um, those are things we can always update. Um, so now it's going to ask us for the level of storage we want to have on this virtual machine. Um, for your Flare VM, you need at least eighty. Um, I would suggest a hundred. I'm going to go ahead and put like two hundred. Well, not two thousand. Two hundred. <laughs> uh, two hundred. Um, but you guys can just put 100 gigabytes if you need. Um, that, that's more than enough. 
Um, but I'm going to be using this virtual machine for a lot. I'm going to be storing some samples on here and some some other other things. So you don't you don't need as much storage as I'm adding. Um, but it is just kind of a viable option, I guess. Uh, but yeah, two hundred will be more than enough for me. We'll just call this Flare VM um, and go ahead and hit finish. All right, it looks like it automatically started. So I'm gonna move this to a different workspace and I'll leave this um, over here. All right, so Windows is going to boot up. Uh, you guys can go ahead and select your language and time, whatever, and we'll go ahead and hit next. Uh, hit install now. Uh, the reason why I'm walking through the ins installation is because there's some settings that I want you guys to configure so that way you guys can more easily use um, this virtual machine without having to worry about any like signing into Windows and all that type of thing. So uh, we'll, I will let this run through. Okay, and it's going to ask for the um, activation key. We don't have a product key, so we can just say we don't have a product key um, and see if that loads. Cool. So now from here, you're going to want to select Windows 10 Pro. Uh, do not select Home or what the other ones. Select Pro if it's available to you. Um, this is the one you want to use because you don't have to sign into Windows with this one. Um, it'll just it'll let you sign out or sign, make an offline account. Um, so yeah, Windows 10 Pro is what we want to select. So we'll go ahead and hit next. All right, uh, the license popped up. We'll just blindly accept the terms and agreement <laughs> as we <laughs> probably will. And then uh, custom install is what we want to select and then select your drive uh, that you chose. So. We'll select the one that we created, hit next. All right, and now it's going to actually install Windows, copying all the files, all, doing all those uh, boring Windows things. So we'll let that run through that process. Cool, now it's asking us what region uh, are we in? We are United States, but of course select your appropriate region for whatever country uh, you are from. Keyboard layout, we're going to select US. Add a second keyboard layout, we're going to skip that. All right, so how would we like to set it up? We're going to set it up for personal use. So we'll go ahead and select personal use and hit next. Um, it's going to ask us to create an account. In the bottom left, you'll see offline account. So we're going to select offline account because we don't want to sign into Microsoft. Uh, we'll also select the limited experience because again, we do not want to sign in. Uh, who's going to use this PC? I'll just say Flare VM, FVM, but you can call it you know whatever username you want. Um, super memorable password. I'm just going to do malware and malware all right so security questions um you can kind of just fly through these if you want um they honestly don't matter i'm not even sure why they're here it's not like you can recover the account like that um but yeah you can just fill it in with whatever okay now it's going to ask us for a bunch of bull crap we're just going to turn all of these off um and hit accept Uh, we can go ahead and skip this. We're going to say not now because we don't want Cortana in the way of what we're trying to do. Hi. <laughs> All right, and it looks like Windows is going to go ahead and install. All right, and Windows has finished installing. Awesome. So we can go ahead and do a few things um, to the operating system just so that way we can have uh, the best setup that we can have, I guess. Um, I'll go ahead and open up the Windows setting by hitting Windows key I and I want to set it up so that way we can have this uh, you know our display a little bit bigger than it is currently then we want to go to display scroll down and then you'll see a resolution um, you can just choose whatever resolution you want 1920 by 1080 is probably one of your better options I want to use 1920 by 12 just because uh, that's what my uh, laptop has so i'm gonna keep it that way you'll notice that you can't really see the virtual machine anymore so just go to virtual machine or hit view scale display and always and it will scale the display to your computer so this is the size that i want but again just choose whatever one you want um 1920 by 1080 is the one that pretty much all of you guys are going to choose uh you can also change the size um i might make this about like 125 maybe 150 125 is better just to make e-text a little bit bigger as well cool um and that's pretty much it for that setting section flare is going to handle a lot of the other things that we uh, may need um so let's go ahead and do some other configurations cool so let's go on to 
Microsoft Edge. And there's a few things that we're going to need to download for our virtual machine. I'll go ahead and make this full screen for us. Um, no, we don't want to stay up to date. Start without our data. Continue without this data. Uh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hate that. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many pop-ups, dude. All right. Um, there you go. So first thing we want to search up, obviously, is Flare VM. And we'll want to install Flare VM onto this virtual machine. So we can just go to the Flare repository. Uh, go ahead and select this code. And you can go ahead and download the zip file. Cool. Um, the second thing I want to search up is we want to go to the Spice guest editions um, that we saw in our uh, um, repository. So Spice guest tools. We can search that up. And you can see right here, uh, space spice.org slash download HTML. Uh, you want to go to this website and we want to go to the guest windows binaries and you'll see spice guest tools right here. So we'll select that, um, and download that as well. All right. So go ahead and open your file explorer. We're going to want to go to downloads and install the spice guest tools latest. So just double click that. We'll select yes. And we'll just kind of speed through the installation. I agree. Hit next. Install. You can go ahead and select finish. The so the Kimu uh, Spice Guest Editions or whatever. Um, it did rescale our <laughs> our uh, display. So we'll go have to go back through and quickly just change it back to how we had it previously. Do not do twenty percent. Keep and then we'll do one hundred twenty five percent. Perfect. So with the Spice Guest tools um, installed, we should actually be able to copy and paste as well as drag and drop files in and out of the virtual machine, right? So if I just go to the web browser, I'll just copy the words Flare VM, hit Control C. And then if I open up something like a notepad on this virtual machine and I can Control V, you can see that Flare VM is right there, which is awesome, cool. So copy and paste now works. We can drag and drop files into our virtual machine. Um, and we should be good to go. So by the time you guys are watching this video, this registry file will be available on the um, malware DNA repository. So make sure just to scroll up and download it um, and bring it onto your virtual machine, or you can copy and paste uh, the contents, which I will be doing. Um, right now it's not on the repository, but by the time you guys are watching this video, um, I will have made sure to put it up on the repository. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the registry file and uh, I'll save it and we'll just call it personalize.reg. Cool. And we can close this. Um, let's go to our uh, documents and run the personalized registry file. Hit yes. Okay. And there you go. You can see we have our dark theme, <laughs> which is nice. Cool. Uh, so now that we have dark theme, we can delete this registry file. Um, this just gives us dark theme as well as the transparency and some of the other cool uh, things that you don't have to worry about um, manually going through. Because we don't have Windows activated, so you can't do it through the settings. Um, so you have to do it through the registry. While we're here, let's go to view and uh, let's enable item checkboxes, item file name extensions, and hidden items, all of which will be very helpful to have enabled while we're working through our malware analysis virtual machine. You can go ahead and delete that file and unzip the flare VM file. So we'll extract all, extract, cool. And I'm gonna drag and drop this to the desktop. Close this, uh, we can delete all this other crap and go ahead and rely on the one on the desktop. So let's go ahead, double click on it. We'll copy the path that it gives us and we'll open up a PowerShell, a specifically a admin PowerShell. So we're gonna click PowerShell, run as administrator. Yes, cool. So you wanna do CD and paste in the path of your uh, Flare VM folder. That should be on the desktop. Uh, once we're there, we can list and make sure that we are looking at all the right and appropriate files, which you can see we are. Cool, so the first thing we wanna do is set the execution policy uh, to be unrestricted. There you go. And we're going to hit capital Y for yes. Um, after that, uh, we want to unblock the file 
uh, install that PS1. So go ahead and unblock that file. After that, um, we should be able to install it with no problem. But before we do, let's go ahead and get a snapshot of the machine. Right here, there's a snapshots button. We can hit the little plus sign in the bottom left. And in here, we'll select um, just, let's say base windows and then description, uh, windows installed are ready for flare. Cool. And you can hit finish and it will create the uh, snapshot so we can have something to go back to in case if something goes wrong with our uh, installation. Now that we have um, a snapshot that we can go back to, let's go ahead and execute the install.ps1 file. So it's going to check if we're running as administrator, which we are. It's checking our execution policy, some of the other things. Um, it's going to ask us to disable Windows Defender. Um, let's go ahead and in our uh, Windows security settings, uh, Windows uh, security. What we're going to do instead of disabling uh, Defender because our computer is going to be rebooting multiple times and the Defender is going to be all over the place. Um, what I'm going to do is go to the, um, see if we can go to the manage settings and then see if we can add an exclusion. Yes. And then we want to exclude a folder and we're just going to exclude the entire uh, C drive of the computer. So that way we don't have to worry about it. So this PC, uh, local disk and select that folder. Cool. So the entire computer is excluded from antivirus. So antivirus won't um, flag anything for anything that we have going on in our computer. So we just added that exclusion there. So we don't have to worry about anything that we um, may try to do. Um, all right, so we'll just go ahead and hit yes. So off the bat, it says you are not using your virtual machine or you have hardened your virtual machine to not appear as one. Um, Kimu is really nice and there's not a lot of, at least currently, detections for um, detecting it as a virtual machine. So it's really, really nice if you're analyzing malware that detects if it's being analyzed within a virtual machine, um, those flags will not go off. So I really like Kimu for that because you don't have to worry about that extra step in the um, you know anti-analysis stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and hit continue. We'll say yes. Um, have you taken the VM snapshot? We just did. Um, it's going to get our credentials. So it's going to ask for a password. I put malware, which is the same as the one for the, uh, uh, whatever password you put for this first machine is the password you should put in there. Okay. So after a short while, you will see this pop up. We don't really need to touch too much of these things at the top. Um, it's just going to show us what tools we have available to install and what tools um, that it is going to install. I'm going to hit this little button at the bottom so it just installs everything. I don't have to worry about anything not being installed, um, at least any of those packages that it should install not being installed. Um, there, there may be some uh, packages that fail, so we may have to go through and manually install some packages uh, towards the end of the installation. But other than that, we'll just go ahead and hit OK and let it do its thing. After this, it is going to go ahead and continue through with the installation process. Um, the installation process can go up to like three hours long. So don't anticipate a uh, super quick, um, you know, installation. Uh, this is going to take its time. Uh, but while you're doing this, you know, you feel free to, you know, work through both of the um, Renux installations as well as the player installations at the same time because um, both of them can take quite a long time to finish. All right, you guys can see that we do have uh, Flare VM finally finished installing. So we can go ahead and hit OK. Uh, let that hit enter, exit. Go ahead and build out our uh, Remnux virtual machine. So I'm going to hit this little button in the top left. We're going to select, I'm selecting Planet Cosmo, but again, you can select the normal KMU KVM option. Um, I'm going to do a local install and we're going to go ahead and set up the Remnux box. So what we want to do is uh, choose the Ubuntu ISO. Uh, real quick, you will see that the Flare VM um, like QCAL2 image is in here and you can see it's 200 gigabytes. So this is the actual virtual machine file. And this is why I suggest you leave your ISOs in the same directory as these images because it kind of just puts them all in one place uh, really easily. But again, we're going to select uh, Ubuntu uh, and then in the operating system that we chose we'll just go ahead and put Ubuntu and there's already 20.04 um, 
uh, real quick, the, there is a specification when it comes to um, the Ubuntu images, right? So th we need to use Ubuntu uh, 20.04 for Remnux. It, it's just kind of more ideal is what it suggests in the documentation. So it's what we're going to use just to kind of put that out there because there are newer versions of Ubuntu, um, but it does suggest to use this version. So cool. Uh, again, we'll just keep it the standard four gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs. Uh, we can always update that if we need to. Um, for the actual disk storage, I'm going to do about like 100 gigabytes of uh, space. Whoops, 100. Um, you don't need that much space. You only need like 40, 60 at the most. Go ahead and go move forward. Uh, this machine will call rem nux, just like that. And go ahead and finish. All right, it opened up our uh, rem nux box. It's going to ask us to select the language. We'll click English uh, and then we'll just go down straight to install Ubuntu. For our language, we can go ahead and hit English and continue because that's the language that I would like to uh, choose. Um, I will choose these defaults for the keyboard layout as well. Um, it's going to ask us for what type of installation that we want to have. Um, realistically, uh, you would want to select a minimal installation just the web browser and basic utilities. However, I would I don't want to install things like the Office software in case if I want to uh, look at any macros and things like that. So I will be doing a normal installation. It's completely up to you. Most people select the minimal installation. I just tend to be a little bit overkill with my stuff. So I'm going to do a normal installation with the third party software and stuff as well. Um, just so I don't have to worry about anything that can go wrong in the virtual machine. I know that I have everything I need. Um, but again, it is entirely up to you on which type of installation you want to go about doing. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit continue. Uh, we're going to select erase disk and install Ubuntu and hit install now. Uh, continue. Uh, it's going to ask us where we are. I would select New York. And then it's going to ask us for our name and all the other information. Now, I included what information you're supposed to put um, as those values right here. So um, Remnux user, Remnux, and the password being malware. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'd say uh, remnux user, uh, the computer's name, we can just do remnux is fine. Username is remnux and then malware and then malware. And that should be, it. I'm gonna select login automatically because this is a virtual machine, I don't really care. Um, but you guys can again, choose whatever uh, options you want. So we'll hit continue. All right, cool. And you can see that it is now installing Ubuntu. So we'll come back and uh, check in as soon as it's done. All right, Remnox is letting us know that the installation is complete. So we can hit restart now and uh, restart the machine. And we can actually get to um, installing the Remnox partition outside of the actual uh, Ubuntu installation that we have on top of it. All right, please remove the installation medium and hit enter. So we'll just hit enter because we don't really have a uh, installation medium. Cool. So um, we are actually in the Ubuntu machine now. It's asking us to connect our online accounts. We'll just skip that. Uh, but we also will skip that as well. Don't send analytics and uh, see if there's anything else. Location services we don't need. Uh, you can use software to install these apps. Awesome. Cool. So first things first, let's open up a terminal. Uh, we'll just go ahead and hit terminal. There you go. And I forgot Ubuntu does have its own uh, little thing. Don't upgrade. We don't want to upgrade. Okay. So in here, what we're going to do is sudo apt update tack y and and sudo at upgrade tack y. And this should allow us to update and upgrade the current system. So we have all the new packages or whatever. Uh, we can close this because uh, we'll just do it through the terminal. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and find the settings. So we'll click on the little app thing and click on settings. Um, let's go ahead and fix our display so we can have a, you know, a better display here. Um, what we'll do is, first of all, I'm going to go out of full screen so we can make sure to scale the display. So view, uh, scale display always. And then we're going to go on to displays. And what we're going to select is uh, the resolution that you want to use. I'm going to use the same that I've been using 1920 by 12, but most of you guys will probably want 1920 by 1080. 
um, and then we'll go ahead and hit apply. Uh, keep these changes. Um, I'm also going to go on the appearance and hit dark mode because I'd like to have uh, a darker theme within the uh, Ubuntu machine. We can go ahead and close this and check out our terminal and let that finish uh, installing all the packages and things. And we can get ready to install Remnux once this finishes uh, installing. So it looks like um, Ubuntu has finished um, updating and upgrading so we can have a good uh, stable uh, you know, image to use. I'll go ahead and clear uh, the screen. Let's go back to the MyRDNA repository and you can just copy um, this stuff to install the Remnux uh, installation. Oops. And we'll go over here. Can we make this any bigger? Yes, we can. Uh, so we'll go like here, it's fine. Uh, and yeah, we can control shift B, paste it. Um, just so you guys know, um, Remnux or uh, Ubuntu comes pre-installed with the uh, Flare tools that we'll need. Uh, whoops. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was a little weird. Maybe not, uh, yeah, maybe don't do all of them at the same time. Whoops, I keep doing that. Um, what was the last thing it ran? It just moved everything. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. So let's go back here and uh, uh, we should be able just to do, let's see, these last two. Uh, control shift B. Okay. And then lastly, we can get our Remnux install. So copy this and we'll go onto the machine and paste that in. And that will start installing uh, Remnux for us. All right, so it looks like our Remnux image has finished installing. So let's go ahead and reboot. All right, so it looks like our Remnux user is here. So we can go ahead and hit uh, enter our password in. Ooh, snazzy. We got the Remnux background, the terminal here. And uh, yeah, it looks uh, it looks pretty good. Um, we can check out the applications and see um, if go hit all, see what tools we have. Ghidra, Cyberchef, Cutter, this had to easy. So yeah, you guys can see we got a good amount of tools to add our, um, to our disposal. Um, so on our new Remnux box, one of the tools I want to get on here before I start setting up the isolated network is Blue Jupiter. Uh, Blue Jupiter is a tool created by Husky Hacks, um, a amazing, amazing guy within the malware community. Um, he also has a course uh, called what, uh, practical malware analysis and triage. I think the PMAT, uh, I finished the course. It was an amazing course. I learned a lot from it. Um, parts of the, uh, lab I have here are inspired, um, off of his lab. So, uh, definitely check out him, his work and his course. Um, but regardless, um, I'm going to go ahead and install Blue Jupiter. I thought it was a really cool tool and, uh, I'm going to install it. For those of you who don't even know what Blue Jupiter is, it's just a tool that allows us to automate um, some pretty cool uh, malware analysis, uh, you know, processes. Uh, make your tool samples, uh, RM to RF, or we can get rid of documents, documents, uh, music, uh, pictures, public, samples. Oh, actually, no, we just created that. Uh, we'll keep templates, uh, videos. Cool, there you go. So uh, we'll see into tools and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll have all the commands on the malware DNA repository for you guys to copy and paste. So if you guys want to uh, go ahead and build the same uh, tool suite and such that I have, then uh, I'll make sure to leave that in the, uh, the, the repository. All right, it looks like that finished. There's a little warning, but I think it should be fine. Um, let's go ahead and drop in the last command. It'll be on the GitHub as I mentioned previously. Uh, I'm just hoping to see we can run that command and see the uh, the whole thing work. Okay, so we get a URL. Let's click that URL. Okay, and it opened up Blue Jupiter, and we have access to uh, the tool to work with if we need to. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and close this because I, I don't need it running right now. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I could uh, have it if I needed it. So yeah, we'll shut it down and let's go ahead and get started with the isolated network for our uh, malware environment. So, uh, 
So double click on your uh, Kimu network. If you guys are using the default, you'll probably be using a uh, Kimu KVM, but I have my own one from my home server. So I'll double click this one. Uh, you'll see an overview about the actual network. Uh, if you go on to virtual networks, you'll see that you have um, different networks that you can actually build here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build one for our malware analysis. Um, so you would probably want to call this uh, malware analysis network or malware network or whatever. I'm a not very funny guy, so I'm going to call it squid penis. It's an inside joke. If you guys are on Discord, you'll probably know why we have that. Um, very not very unprofessional, but I don't really care. Um, so outside of that, once we have the name of our malware network, we just want to select isolated so that way it can be a isolated network so it doesn't interfere um, with our devices at home. So if we're running dangerous malware, it's not going to uh, do anything crazy. Um, instead of uh, 192.168, I'm going to use 10.0.0.0/24. Uh, so this gives us a range on the um, 10. whatever range so that way we can identify our malware machines a little bit more easily. Um, yeah, that should be it. I don't think we need anything else here other than that. So we can go ahead and hit finish and it will say creating the virtual network. Um, so yeah, now you can see Squid Penis is the malware <laughs> uh, isolated network that we have available to us. So what I'm going to do is in our Remnux machine, um, I'm going to go to the information and then there you'll see a NIC section. Uh, would you like to know? Okay. Um, and we can go ahead and change the network from the default to our malware isolated network and go ahead and hit apply. So now that's applied, we can go ahead and reboot the virtual machine and go ahead and go back to work on it. All right, cool. So we are on our Remnux machine again. Uh, we can go ahead and full screen, make this terminal just a little bit bigger. And uh, real quick, let's go ahead and check our network settings. If we refresh that little uh, network area, you can see our new IP address, which is 10.0.0.150. So we'll have to remember the IP address because um, I want to set up the internet simulation. So in our malware analysis um, environment or in our lab, um, we can actually simulate an internet connection. So that way, um, malware that tries to connect down to the internet can still work um, and pull um, a a uh, proof of concept payload down rather than actual malware. Um, but this is good so we can analyze um, the kind of network interactions that the malware may be doing. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to, uh, you can follow along with the repository, the malware uh, DNA repository will have all the commands that I am using. Uh, so sudo, vim, etc. inet sim. So inetsim is the program that we're going to be using to simulate internet connection. You kind of hear it in the name, right? Internet simulation, inetsim. Um, so let's go ahead and go into this file. First things first, we want to remove the comment for the service DNS. We want to find service uh, bind address. Um, and you can see service bind address right here. So what we're going to need to do is go to the beginning, uncomment it. So our service bind address just needs to be 0.0.0.0. .0 and that's our bind address. Uh, now we need to find our DNS default IP. And right here, um, this will be our IP address. So um, change this to 10.0.0.150 or whatever IP address your uh, malware analysis network uses. We'll write this to the file, save, and then go ahead and do some system CTL things so I'm going to just copy this from the docs and paste it into here and go ahead and run those. So now that inetsim is fully configured, our malware um, Remnux machine is now pretty much all set up. So we don't have to worry about anything else. Let's go ahead and create a snapshot. So we'll just call this uh, base uh, Remnux. And I'll just say uh, inetsim and blue Jupiter uh, finish. Cool, and we'll let that finish saving. And that is pretty much it regarding the uh, Remnox box. Let's go ahead and take our Flare VM machine and go ahead and add it to our isolated network. We can go to the information tab, find the NIC section. Uh, we'll just, no, it doesn't matter. Um, go ahead and select your malware network and hit apply. Uh, as soon as we hit apply, we can go ahead and 
reboot the virtual machine. So let's go to the bottom right where we can check out our network settings. We'll go ahead and click on network and internet settings. We're going to select ethernet. And then on the far right, you'll see change adapter options. We'll select that and then double click on the uh, ethernet uh, option that shows up. Go ahead and click properties. You'll see internet protocol version four, uh, double click that. And then we want to use our own custom DNS server address, which is going to be our 10.0.0.150 or whatever IP address you have for your uh, Remnux virtual machine. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit okay. Okay. And close. Cool. So I'll just minimize that in case we need to change anything, but we should be able to now go onto our Linux machine, uh, open up a terminal. You want to do sudo inet sim. Okay, it looks like the simulation is running, uh, which is great. So that means we can go back to our uh, Remnux machine. We can open up our browser. We'll just open up Microsoft Edge, for example. And if we go to cosmodiumcs.com, you'll notice that it takes us to the inet sim uh, default HTTP page. So we can simulate the internet now. And it's great because if um, some sort of malware is trying to download some sort of file. We can just do like slash malware.exe. Um, INSM will go ahead and download a fake um, malicious binary that we can use in our program. So we can go on download so you can see our fake malware.exe. And we can double click that. I think it's just a message box or something that will pop up. Uh, run. Yeah, so it's just some default, uh, you know. Uh, program, but it's good. So it allows us to check over like the internet connection or it allows us to you know, not only fake an internet connection, but through tools like Wireshark, we can see the domains it's trying to reach out to and have successful callbacks uh, from the malware. So the malware thinks that it is in a, uh, a, you know, a machine that has an actual internet connection. Um, other than that, those are really the main configurations that I do to my virtual machines. And from there, you guys can go ahead and, uh, you know, add whatever renditions you want. You can see I have my tools like pinned in my uh, uh, taskbar here. Obviously my um, virtual machine isn't fully configured, but um, ultimately this is just to help you guys get a gauge of what you guys need to install, what you guys need to set up and what you guys can kind of do to make, um, you know, Flare and Remnux really work in your benefit. Um, other than that, that's really going to be it for this video. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me watching through this. And hopefully you got out a lot out of it. Hopefully you found a cool uh, way to set up your own malware lab at home. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Stay happy, stay positive, and as always, happy hacking.